Hello, and welcome back to Data Every Day, Episode 11. Today we'll be looking at a data set of chest, uh, chest x-ray images in which we'll try to classify whether a patient has pneumonia or not based on the x-ray image data. We'll be using TensorFlow and um, taking advantage of its, its uh, uh, convolutional layers to try to get the highest classification accuracy on the data that we can. Okay, so let's start by importing our usual libraries. We'll get NumPy and Pandas. And we'll get matplotlib as well. Then we will import TensorFlow. And uh, we'll call it TF. And also for, uh, for ease, we will import tensorflow.keras uh, we'll get layers so that we don't have to keep writing out tensorflow.keras.layers every time we want to make a new layer. Okay, so we'll start off by taking a look at our data here. Let me just drag this up. Okay, so we have a folder containing a test, train, and validation data. In each side we have two classes, so these will be our directories that we will um, use to extract the data from. So let me just grab one of these and then we can call train directory will be this and we'll just right here make that train. We'll do the same thing for the validation and test. Val test and then this will be val and this will be test. Okay. There we go, there we go. Now let's define uh, how are we going to resize the images. So we'll give them all an image height of 128 and an image width of 128. Uh, this will just make it easier. Uh, 128 is uh, pretty standard. We could also do 256, but we'll stick with 128. Batch size we'll keep at 32. And now we will set up our data sets using TensorFlow dataset uh, format. So TensorFlow has a great uh, great function called uh, it's in tf.keras, well, I guess it's a Keras uh, function, no, preprocessing. tf.keras.preprocessing.image dataset from directory. And all we have to do is feed in our, our uh, directory path, the color mode, which in this case is grayscale. Whoops. Uh, the image size, which will be just the image height and width that we specified earlier, and the batch size should be uh, batch size. Okay, so we're going to do this for each one. So we'll have a validation one, which would simply be val directory, and a test one, which will be test directory. Okay, so now we have one of each, which should be good. And now to get a, uh, get a look at our data, well we can see this is about right, proper amounts uh, for each data set. Before, uh, let's take a look at our data using matplotlib, pyplot. So we'll say plot.figure, set the figure size, we'll make it a 10 by 10, and then we will, okay, we will iterate through. So um, we're going to take one batch of 32 images and labels from our train data set. So it will look like train ds dot take one so we took one batch and then we're going to get um, the images uh, tensor and the labels tensor in train ds dot take so this is going to be a um, 32 uh, element long array of images image uh, pixel data so our features, 
and labels will be 32 elements long of classifications for each of those images. And so, so this, this is really, even though it's a for loop, it's only executing once because we're taking one. But it's going to split the uh, first batch into images and labels. Then, for nine times, we're just going to show nine of the pictures for I in range nine. Uh, we will make subplots uh, in a three by three fashion. Each subplot taking on a range from one to ten. And we will use the image show, I am show function here, which uh, will take our ith image uh, to show. However, we're going to have to convert it to a numpy array first, and we're going to convert the type as well. Uh, unsigned integer 8 bit. And then we're going to take this whole thing and squeeze it down. Because, um, as you may have seen in one of my last videos, this uh, image show function doesn't like if uh, the array has a, a dimension of 1 in it. We just got to chop that dimension off. So I think uh, this thing here will be uh, 128 by 128 by 1. But what uh, what we can do is use the num numpy's squeeze function to chop that one off, so we get 128 by 128, and that will allow us to show the image. So we can give just give it a title. Uh, right, the title for for one of the subplots will be our train ds dot class names. Which, if we look at that, we can just take a look. Normal and pneumonia corresponding to the folders over here. And so, zero class will be normal, the one class will be pneumonia. So, we'll plot the um, class name that belongs to the ith example. Right? So, we, we get the label, and then we uh, take the class name corresponding to that label. And then we'll just take the axis off. Okay. For consistency, I'll just make these double quotes. Okay. Let's plot it. And what happened? Oh, I didn't put in. What happened here? Oh, I'm missing one of these. Okay. And here we go. All right, you can see we have nine images from our data set, and some of them are normal, some of them have pneumonia. And we're going to take this image data and feed it into our model, neural network, and hopefully we get some good results. So how do we start? Let's see. Okay, we want to build our model, but first let's um, uh, cache and prefetch our data to make to speed up the learning, and to prevent uh, prevent the disk from having uh, they'll prevent it from reading the same image data from the disk every time it has to. So autotune will be tensorflow.data.experimental.autotune and this just means uh, it's a, a value that it will um, dynamically evaluate during runtime. And we're going to have our train data set uh, We'll cache it, and then we will prefetch it with a buffer size of autotune. We'll do the same thing for validation and test. And now we can set up our model. So model equals, we we'll use a sequential model here, tf.keras.sequential. All right, and so first, the first thing we have to do to pass this image data in is we want to rescale it. Because right now the pixel values, it's a grayscale image, but the pixel, so the pixel values will have a, 
a value for a grayscale intensity, and each one will take a value between 1 and 255. But uh, these are these values are a little high, so normally we'd you know we'd use a scalar's min-max scalar, but we can actually just use a special layer in Keras called uh, layers dot experimental dot preprocessing dot rescaling. It's a rescaling layer, and the factor by which we want to rescale is one over two fifty five. Then we'll add uh, three rounds of convolutional layers a 2D convolutional layer combined with max pooling layer. So uh, 32, 3, activation, ReLU, and all right, then we'll do layers.maxpooling, 2D. And then we'll just do this three times. And layers.flatten. So this will take all our image data and flatten it into a uh, single array, a one-dimensional array. And then we will have one fully connected layer at the end with 128 nodes and another eight ReLU activation. And then we will have our final uh, classification layer, also fully connected, but only two two nodes because we have two classes returned to, to um, output and here the activation will be softmax or I think sigmoid will be better okay let's run that now we'll compile our model uh, so optimizer is going to be atom our loss function will be tf.losses dot sparse categorical cross entropy. I know we should use binary cross entropy in this situation, but uh, I've had some problems with it, so I'm going to look into that and hopefully use it in a future video. And we'll include from logits is true. Okay, and for our metrics, we use accuracy. There's not, it's not a highly imbalanced data. Okay, and compile it, and then we'll fit it. So we'll, we'll say number of epochs will be 10. I think uh, makes sense. And model dot fit uh, train data set validation data specified as validation data set and our number of epochs will be 10. Alright, let's fit it. And you can see I have hardware acceleration on over here to speed this up, but I think this is going to take a long time, so I'll, uh, I'll cut this part out and I'll see you when it's done. All right, we're back. That actually took a lot faster than I thought. Um, I assume it's because we already cached the data. Um, there was no, like, the first epoch took a while, and then the other epochs just went very quickly. But it's interesting to notice that the accuracy and validation, uh, validation accuracy are exactly the same, and the loss isn't going down. So. I'm not sure why that is. I'll look into it though. Let's go ahead and evaluate our model on uh, you know this might be very very poor. See this? Really could be very bad. Uh, let's see how it goes. Model.evaluate uh, 
test data set. And 62%. So let's see what we can do to fix that up. Okay. I think I want to try this with a uh, softmax activation function on the end. Just see if that fixes things up a little. All right. I will uh, train this. And oh, hold on. Let me redefine re the model. File. Really, why is this going so fast? The cache, it must still be cached. Hmm. There seems to be a problem with it. It's doing the same thing every time. It's very interesting. If we, if we evaluate it now, it's exactly the same. What can we do? Let's try redoing this. Taking the data again. Uh, Hmm. Hmm. It should be shuffling it too. Okay, now let's uh, try caching it again. And define the model, compiling, and fitting. Okay, this looks like more promising. So I'm wondering if there is a problem with the caching or the prefetching. It looked like it was going blazing fast, but we were not getting any improvements on each epoch. I found that this can happen before. It just gets into a rut. But let's see what happens after this first epoch is done. Because then the uh, prefetching will really come into play. See, it's going a lot faster now. And we're getting the same results. Very strange. This is not what I got when I was trying it uh, before. In any case. All right, looks like we got about 62% accuracy. So when I was testing it out, I got about 72% accuracy. But um, I guess this will have to do. I might make a follow-up video on this since it didn't really go as planned. Um, but uh, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Um, it's been a great, great, great uh, time, even though we didn't really get what we wanted. Um, if you liked the video, make sure to hit the subscribe button and leave a comment below. I'll see you guys tomorrow on Data Every Day. Bye, guys.